What's up good people and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we bond over our favorite TV shows, trending topics, and everything in between that we care about. So today, I'm here with a blind reaction video of sorts. I was on LSA browsing as I do from time to time and someone posted an old article of Darius Crooks, AKA Darius Williams, AKA Darius Travoy Williams. And the article is from somewhere around circa 2013, 2014, which would be a couple short years after Darius Crooks had scammed well over 200 people in Chicago with the fresh go scam and his cupcake gallery scam and the food truck scam and the unauthorized credit card charges on you know various accounts etc so around this time darius was reinventing himself he had moved to new york or run off to new york or escaped to new york <laughs> however you want to define it and so this would be one of the many articles around that time that were done on him with the persona that he was inventing that you know we somewhat see now so i thought it would be interesting to basically blindly read this article because I don't think I've seen this one before and basically give my reaction and let's see what's changed, what's stayed the same. And again, this would be the beginning of him creating his scampire. So with that, that means I have no title. I literally have no idea what direction this is gonna take, etc. And also just a disclaimer, I am recording this on the 4th of July and it's uh, getting towards sunset. So I'm sure the fireworks will, <laughs> you may start to hear them in the background. I'm not sure the mic may or may not pick them up um, or how loud they'll be, I don't know. But just a disclaimer, if you hear them, ignore them. <laughs> so this article was done by what I presume to be a D-hiver or D-wife. And she looks like based on her introduction, she was starting to be a, a D-wife of sorts. And uh, at the time she was 27 years old. And so she says, let's see, because I'm not gonna do her intro. Let's jump down to where she basically gives her backstory. So she says here, so here's the backstory. I was on Twitter not long ago, and this picture of this masterpiece of a meal floated across my timeline, and my mouth instantly started to salivate with no hesitation. My heart filled up with so much peace just by looking at this photo, and I was this close to biting my eye. <laughs> okay, come on now. She's doing too much. And I was this close to biting my iPhone screen, but I didn't because my Apple Care is expired and ain't nobody got time to pay for a new screen, LOL. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this almost sounds like Darius wrote it, to be honest. This is kind of his writing style. But anyway, let's continue. So she, <laughs> cause now I'm questioning who really wrote this. So she goes on to say, so I found out who created this meal and instantly followed him on Instagram and the mouth salivation continued and even increased. I mean, holy moly donut shop. Can this dude throw down in the kitchen? Okay, she ain't tasted the food though. <laughs> Anybody can make something look good. <laughs> uh, she says, after I lurked on his page, I was able to get a hold of him and we talked via email and I was able to score an awesome interview. This is a dehiver for sure. She's very excited. <laughs> It says Darius Cooks is such a cool dude and his creative dishes never cease to amaze me. Want to see what I'm talking about? Just keep reading. And that's what we're about to do. <laughs> well, I'm reading for y'all. <laughs> yeah, lucky y'all. <laughs> you just get to sit and listen. <laughs> okay, so she writes this in more of a conversational style. So she's talking and then Darius is talking. So she has uh, at Bell, A-T-B-E-L is her. And then DC stands for Darius Crooks. <laughs> or Darius Cooks, <laughs> whichever Elias we're going with. Okay, so this, well, I was going to say this was before he was Darius Crooks, but to be honest, he's always been Darius Crooks. It's just he uh, acquired the moniker of Darius Crooks somewhere around 2016, if I'm not mistaken, people started calling him that, uh, you know, when they got, people started to be more aware of, you know, the scammer that he was, but he was a scammer way back in 2009. But anyway, okay, so let's continue Starting off, again, this is their conversation. She starts off by saying, well, if it isn't Chef Borar Darius himself, how are you, sir? She's trying to be too funny. I don't like that because <laughs> it ain't funny. <laughs> okay, let's continue. So Darius responds by saying, I am fantastic, really. 
I couldn't be any better. That sounds like something he was saying. <laughs> you know, I left the gym today. <laughs> he left it. <laughs> okay, let me slow down. <laughs> let me, cause I, I will not drag throughout this whole video. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, so he says, I left the gym today and ended up at this great Mexican restaurant with the best guac I've ever had. Like, no, seriously. It was creamy, tangy, salty, and just perfect. So I'm great. So he left the gym and immediately went to a Mexican restaurant. That sounds like something he would do, though. He immediately went to a restaurant, and he's talking about how great the um, <laughs> great the guac was and salty. So there's, you know, there's his blood pressure right there. You go to the gym and you just reverse any positive effects you just had with Mexican food, nonetheless. Anyway, and I love Mexican food. There ain't, ain't nothing against me Mexican food, but, you know, what you're trying to do, lose weight or make room. <laughs> I think he's trying to make room. Anyway, okay, so she then laughs and says, I love your food enthusiasm, but I agree. There isn't anything better than some bomb food after a great workout. <laughs> okay, so it looks like there are two peats in a pot. <laughs> ah. Okay, so she then continues to say, well, I first off want to say thank you for even doing this interview because I'm really a big fan of your work and recipes. So she's obviously, as I stated earlier, a D-wife, a D-hiver. I'm not sure. She seemed like she was already, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid prior to requesting this interview from him. And I would be very curious to know if she's still a D-wife or not. Um, but she seems so diehard that most likely she's ignored, you know, all of the red flags and, and like a, abusive relationships, you know, she's holding on till the wheels fall off. And that's alleged, you know, I don't know. Okay, so then he responds and says, why, thank you for reaching out to me and I'm glad you're a fan. I'm just a dude from the hood trying to cook the food he loves. She then says, I love what you cook, so let's get started, shall we? So for those who don't know you or know what you do, let the people know your name, where you're from, reside, and what you do for a living. So Darius responds, my name is Darius, LOL. Darius Williams, originally born and raised on Chicago's west side, but I currently live in NYC. So remember y'all, he, he lived in Chicago. That's where he, you know, did his first big scams, multiple scams, and then he uh, escaped and ran off to NYC. And he then goes on to say, besides running DariusCooks.com, I work as an HR director for a global commercial real estate firm. I know two totally different lives, but we've got to pay these bills one way or another. So this again, this is great because this is in his own words where we're kind of getting a timeline. So now I'm kind of seeing what this, this might help us. This might take us someplace. So this is Darius giving his own account of his life back in circa 2013, 2014. And he's saying that he worked at, uh, at this time of this interview, he's claiming he was working at commercial real estate firm as the director of HR. There's some debate about that, how true that is, that he was in HR director, et cetera. He definitely, because again, this was only two years or so after he ran off to Chicago and, you know, we last communicated. And at the time that we had last communicated two years prior to that, he was definitely not qualified to be anyone's HR director. He didn't have the education nor the work experience, especially to work for a global commercial real estate firm, you know, in that capacity. So either he is exaggerating, which he did way back then and continues to do today, or he created fake documents and, you know, fake resume and whatever other fake credentials to be able to actually acquire a role that he was not uh, suited for or quali truly qualified for. And, and, and we can look at today as a, maybe an example to see, you know, the validity of this claim, because now we can look into the future from, you know, years after this situation where he was an HR director. However, None of his companies were ran well in that area at all. He couldn't even keep employees and people weren't getting paid and all these things that if you are an HR director of a global firm, you would have, that would be easy. That'd be a cakewalk for you that you would never be getting those sort of complaints. So chances are that wasn't really his role. <laughs> Just put it out there. And an HR director would definitely know not to be doing drugs and smoking weed with your current employees, which you know, is what he's doing now. So there's that. I'm going to be Darius. Okay. 
<laughs> Get off Jerome, okay? <laughs> Get off Jerome. Auntie becoming a smoker? Yes, she is. She becoming a smoker. I don't understand how she be out here. Don't say he won't afford them pills. Boy, I ain't gonna need some shit. Hold on one second, y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> Am I getting sick? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. This y'all, so y'all finna smoke this? Yeah. You want to hit? Nope. I got plenty of. Oh, I, you gotta be careful. Your job will get you in trouble. Who? Your job. My job? Yeah. You gonna <laughs> call HR? <coughs> and tell them what? <laughs> Let me go. Okay, and then she's, she goes on to say, and they say Shy City. Ye voice, LOL. I think she means Yeezy as in uh, Kanye. <laughs> she is not funny. She's corny. <laughs> she's hella corny. <laughs> I know people call me corny, but she's hella corny. <laughs> anyway, she says, my mom is from the south side of the Shy, and I got all my homies that stay on the homies. <laughs> I feel like I've been drinking and I haven't, but okay. She says, and I got all my homies that stay on the west side in K-Town and Holy City. I don't know what Holy City is. I know K-Town though. She says, yeah, you're right, but those are two different jobs. But hey, bills don't pay themselves. So you do what you got to do. So I first found out about you on Twitter when somebody on my timeline retweeted a pic of your collard greens and cornbread cake that is topped with fried chicken and gravy. Baby, when I tell you that, my mouth salivated like no other when I saw that pic. I'm tired of hearing about her salivation. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Wanna think about your spit? Okay, <laughs> so she says, like I literally almost ate my iPhone. She's saying that again. It's corny. <laughs> LOL, what made you even think to make that? <laughs> Now this is interesting because <laughs> I got I got the tea on that. <laughs> this thing here you see, this soul food cake. I can tell you where he got the idea before he even answers. Okay, no, let's let's first see what his answer is, and then I'm gonna give the answer. <laughs> let's let's do it that way. Okay. So Darius then says, "LOL." Well, actually, <laughs> I'm very interested to see the lie he's about to tell because I know it's ain't gonna be the truth. Okay, so he says, LOL. Well, actually, I'm just always creating stuff. <laughs> that's, wh that's what I do when... <laughs> I can't get through it. I... <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, because I really know so much history on this piece of it that is... Oh, God, it's cracking me up, and I haven't started. Let me, let me pipe down and get back to commentary mode. Okay, professional mode. <clears throat> okay, so he says... That's what I do with my cooking. I take the envelope and I push it and then I walk away. Okay, <laughs> is that an answer? He says, then I come back to it and I push it some more. That's what I did with the collard greens cornbread cake. If you think about it, how many times on a black holiday table have we seen collard greens, cornbread, mashed potatoes and gravy and fried chicken? Just about every darn time, right? So I figured what better way to celebrate our culture than to try to put it all together. Like to take familiar ingredients and present them in brand new ways. That's what I do. Okay. <laughs> he really didn't give a real answer of how he formulated that particular recipe. It was just kind of like very broad of an answer. And the reason is this, he's calling it here. I'm kicking things off with my recipe for my collard green and cornbread cake. Which ain't even a great name. When the actual name of it is the soul food cake. The reason I know this is because it was done by a young lady, I think at least a year or two before he even did it. We are in the kitchen with celebrity pastry chef Bree Miller and she is about to make her famous soul <laughs> cake. Uh, let me help uh, show a few people how popular you are with the, some of the celebrities that, that are there's Kevin Hart is a big fan of mm -hmm. yours. Kevin as Hart. well as Chrissy Teigen. We have the photos? Yeah. The, yeah, they love the soul cake. Yeah. 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 I find it hard to believe she's eating that cake. I, no, yeah. I she it. actually orders the most out of everybody. We're going to put together your soul food Oh, cake. yeah. I'm going to show you guys how to put it together. But what inspired you to do this to begin with? Well, I love food. 
in yeah. general. So we do too. I'm always around <laughs> cake. I don't really eat cake anymore, which is sad. But nobody in my family eats cake. So on Easter, I was like, everybody bring a side dish. So I was like, okay, well, here's my side dish. I just made it look like a cake. That's so not an original idea. And this speaks to, and again, this is 2013, 2014. This is around the time where Darius's brand was growing. So around this time, he had somewhere, you know, in the 30 to 40,000 subscriber or followers area because he said in an interview at one point, once he reached 40,000 followers, he realized that he basically was sitting on money and that he can monetize his brand. And that's when he became a full-time content creator around that time. So what he did with this recipe and, and many others, so he would take recipes of little known chefs in the you know social media world, and he would take their recipes, the ones that he enjoyed, he would then present them on his platform as if it was his original idea never giving any credit, never saying this recipe was inspired by or anything like that and maybe tweaking it, he would take it and just present it as if it was his recipe, his brainchild, et cetera. And because these people were lesser known than him and didn't have as many followers even back then, it just became a thing because he had a larger following that all of a sudden he was getting credit for the idea when it was never his and he never gave credit to the original creator of this. And so this has been interesting. I heard about this whole soul food cake thing like a year or so ago, and I you know, found it to be very interesting because some of these things we have receipts on, and this would be one that there's a receipt that before he even posted it, it was actually done by another creator. And I think it was on TV or newscast. But anyway, I don't wanna speculate because it's been too long and I got too many, <laughs> too many things in my head as it pertains to this foolishness. So I don't want to confuse facts. But anyway, whatever I have, you are now seeing on the screen. So let's see what happens next. So she then responds, because she's eating it up, <laughs> literally, because she wants to eat her phone because his food is so good. So she says, I never really looked at it that way, but you definitely have taken holiday eating favorites to a whole different level with that creation. And I'm here for all of it. LOL. She goes on to say, have you always had the passion for cooking? If not, what made you start creating all of these amazing dishes? <laughs> she is really <laughs> fanning out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. And so Darius responds. And this is, this here is going to be interesting because over the years, his reason for his passion for cooking, you know, there are different versions of his story. And now, in present day, he gives all the credit to his grandmother. And it's, so it's going to be interesting to see if this narrative has changed uh, from eight years ago. So let's see. He responds, I've always had a passion for eating good food. <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> we can see that. And he says, so I figured early on that if I wanted to eat good food, I might have to learn how to cook it. I started whipping up stuff in my mother's kitchen when I was about nine years old. <laughs> That's kind of how he would say it. <laughs> He, um, he goes on to say, I've seen my mother make fried chicken a million times. So I tried to do it one day by taking the chicken and seasoning it, battering it, and then fried it. And it was delicious. But the one thing was that it was actually turkey wings, not chicken wings. And I didn't even know the difference back then. So I can say that I've been frying turkey long before it was even popular. So the story has changed. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm, I, I got a system now where I'm archiving things. And so I'll say, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it for this video or not, but I will say the other version of the story that he tells has nothing to do with his mom and his mom's kitchen. It's all about his grandmother. And it was his grandmother who actually told him it was turkey wings and not the chicken wings he thought, you know, he was frying, et cetera. So th this is part of the evolution because at a certain point, he realized that it was more marketable. And so the reason why this story has evolved over time is again, we see before he had put all the pieces together, the reason why the grandmother started to come to the forefront as this story, because it was so endearing and she became basically a deity in his storyline because many people can identify with it. And so the truth of the matter is, it's about branding. And so, through switching it from being his mother to his grandmother, he was then able to do uh, stories from my grandmother's kitchen because everybody's like, oh, your grandmother, da, 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 she taught you how to cook, you know, all of that. So 
Again, this is helpful in, you know, helping us put some of those earlier pieces together. So then she asked, do you have any professional chefs that you look up to that inspire you to cook? So then he responds, I don't really follow professional chefs because there's a touch to what I do and that's super personal and familiar. Sometimes chefs can be too strict or too sciency. <laughs> sciency. And yes, I know that's a word I just made up, LOL. But for me, it's about letting the food take you on a journey, and I know how to do that well. Yes, with a lot of salt and processed foods. <laughs> so he then goes on to say, some others that do it for me are people like Sonny Anderson, Nancy Fuller, and Ina Garten. Now, I remember... When he was still in Chicago, he was huge on watching the Food Network. Like, he watched it incessantly. Again, because that's where he learned. He was, he's not a professional chef. He's never been to culinary school or nothing like that. He's all has been self-taught <laughs> poorly. And so he learned through, like, his, his formal education <laughs> was the Food Network. And Sonny Anderson was one of those people that he definitely was really into uh, around that time. And he even eventually ended up connecting with her, meeting her, being on her show a couple times. But then that relationship went awry when he had the Fresco scam. He tried to pull her in as an investor. She actually was considering it until she had her attorneys uh, look at the paperwork. And they were like, it's a no-go. And she actually posted... Uh, a response about that on Twitter when Darius was trying to claim the reason why they fell out was because she was jealous of him because her producers wanted him on the show and all of this other shenanigans because it's like, why would she hate on you when she was the one trying to have you on the show? Like, she's the reason you were on the show. So anyway, she responded, shutting that down, saying that her attorneys looked at the paperwork and they said it was a no because <laughs> it was it was janky it, even one of my good friends did get involved in it and he felt shaky about the contract in terms as well but because he knew of Darius through me and because he knew me he went into it with good faith that you know I know him he you know at that time we didn't think he was a scammer <laughs> and so he invested but he didn't invest as much as he was originally going to invest because of the fact that you know it seemed all shaky and came out to be true that it was shaky and it was a, a scam. So long story short, Sonny Anderson was really a major player in his life, um, you know, for a, about a year, really. Uh, well, prior to that, him being like a super fan. But then once they actually met, like many of his relationships, working relationships, especially, he ruined it. And so, you know, to this day, a decade later, she's calling him still a scammer and, you know, warning people about him so and we've done videos on that like look at the Darius Crooks playlist you'll see where she's called him out as recent as uh the spring of this year or something uh the spring of 2022 so okay so let's see what the D-Wife super fan asked him after that she says what motivated you to create your website and share your dishes with the world <laughs> the world <laughs> uh let's see Okay, we got pictures, 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 pictures. Okay, so Darius says, I felt it was just time to do so. At the core of who I am lies the responsibility of the art of creativity, and I need to share it with the world. Besides, <laughs> some of this stuff, Jesus. <laughs> it's like, it's not a real bone in your body when you talk like this. So, so he goes on to say, besides, one day I want to be this huge food star. And if no one knows I can cook, why would they look my way? So I started food blogging eight years ago. I've gone through several blogs and several URLs until I found my perfect point of view that I wanted to showcase, DariusCooks.com. And then he goes on to say, definitely embodies the true essence of who I am. It's my personality, my struggles, my history, my laughter, and my pain all displayed through the recipes on my website. So I find this interesting. I never really consider this, what he's saying here. Um, for, for one, <laughs> let's go with the fact that he says he wanted to be this huge food star. I know that for a fact. He was really working on that, you know, like you said, eight years or so ago. 
well, eight years prior to this even. So it like in the early 2000s. And now <laughs> when you listen to him, he doesn't talk about that anymore. He claims that's not what he want, wants at all. And he never wanted that. He just wants to be rich, like a multimillionaire. And he doesn't care about the, like he's gonna build his own brand. I don't know. I think he's the, <laughs> I think he might think that he's the Tyler Perry of food, <laughs> but Tyler Perry's brand is not garbage. <laughs> it has not been trashed. Darius has no ability to be seen as legitimate by the world at this point because his brand is garbage. When you Google him, you will see Google Darius Cooks, Darius Crooks comes up right behind us. Is he a scammer? All the articles from Black Enterprise, Forbes magazine, Southern Grid, you know, um, the Grio, all of those things that are exposing him and all of his history of being, you know, predatory practices and all of that, all of that stuff pops up immediately when you Google him. So his brand is garbage. He knows that. So now he's pivoting because he's, he's good. Again, we're reading where he was creating his narrative in, in that phase of his life. And so now the narrative is that's not what he wants at all. That's not, that's not important to him. The truth is he's given up on that because at this point brands won't touch him. And so he says he has no interest in brands because you can't make money there and people are profit sharing and all of that, which is really nonsensical when you think about it <laughs> because he, he has a limit. He, there's like a ceiling of what he's going to be able to do on his own, where you have a Tabitha Brown, who is a multimillionaire way richer than he is. And he's been at this well over a decade and scamming his way through this for well over a decade. Tabitha Brown has literally been on our radars since the pandemic. So like two years and she's way more wealthy than Darius Crooks has product lines, has a New York times bestseller book clothing in, you know, target movies, all of this stuff, which is the life he wanted again. One day I want to be this huge food star. He wanted to be Tabitha Brown. The problem is, and he could have been, I'm not going to take that from him. He literally could have been had he not scammed and been such a horrible person, like a predator on top of that. Like that karma has like come back and God don't like ugly. So now he's been relegated to his small circle of, you know, dehivers who is really all he's making his money off of now. Cause the, the world ain't interested and he's not going to grow anymore. And eventually his brand will whittle down to, you know, nothingness. So, and, and the other part of this that I, I found interesting, and this is what I was going to say at first is that he says here, he started food blogging, you know, in the early two thousands. And I remember when he was blogging and there, you know, people have captured that stuff. His beginning blogs were more of a journal of his life and where he was at that moment and childhood traumas and things of that nature. And then he started at some point, you know, years later, food blogging and kind of making recipes at home and blogging them. That was again, how he ended up meeting Sonny Anderson through that. Cause he was doing uh, food blogging and she started to see some of his stuff. But what he did at some point is he realized the perfect marriage between the two blogging, storytelling and food. And he brought it together. And that's what we see because when you look at his social media, it's not about food. Like the food is on there. There's photos, you know, of food on there, but it's naked pictures of him. And, and when I say that actually multiple <laughs> naked pictures of him, which <laughs> are disgusting, <laughs> but what does that have to do with food? And so, because his, and the truth is, it doesn't have anything to do with food. His brand is really not about food. It's about being seen. It's about being a star. And it's about engagement and likes and views. And so for better or worse, he puts his body made wrong up on the screen for engagement, whether it's the positive engagement of the D wives who are like, oh my God, you lost so much weight and blah, blah, blah. And ooh, if you were straight, oh, I'll, if I meet you, all of that foolishness for those who of them who are in love with him. And then the other piece of it is <laughs> those who are like, oh my God, that's gross. And <laughs> the engagement that comes with that and the dragon and the rifting on him and all of that. And so either way in his mind, he, he wins. That's a whole nother story. And so this here shows us around the time where he started to pivot into that on purpose, which is, and as he said, even in the interview with 
um, on Kev on stages, uh, Aska, and it was his episode was Ask a Millionaire, where he said, if I posted food all day, I wouldn't get engagement. So he does the tricks and stunts and the drama and acting like a drag queen for engagement. And he admits that himself. So we we see here, you know, where, where it began. Okay, so let's see what she says next. She next says, I love when you're very open about your relationship with your boyfriend. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> she goes on to say, we all know that with more success comes criticism and everyone on Instagram and other forms of social media has an opinion. That's true. She says, you guys seem to be so in love that he really supports you in all that you do, which is awesome. But do the harsh comments about your homosexuality ever discourage you from doing what you love and being so open about your relationship via social media? Let's see what he has to say about that. So, okay, let's see what he has to say first, and then I'll give my little, my little two cents. And so, as you see here, and I got it on the screen, these are photos. Let me see. Do I need to move for y'all? <laughs> Let me move up a little bit for y'all. So, it says, uh, it, well, so you see on the screen, at this time, you know, there were him and this guy at that time, because this is not his current boyfriend. This was years ago. Um, they all look alike, but many of them do look alike because I, I knew a couple of them. But anyway, this is the guy he was talking to at the time when he lived in New York. And so he says, Darius goes on to say, I think if you incite harsh comments, then they'll come. And I don't do <laughs> And I don't do that. What? Let me reread what I just read. <laughs> I think if you incite harsh comments, then they'll come. And I don't do that. <laughs> That's a laugh in a bit of hell. <laughs> Let me see if I can post a couple of them right here for you. <laughs> okay. <I'm laughs> okay. So let me read this next part. And I'm like, my eyes have started to wonder and I'm cracking up <laughs> at what I'm reading already. It says, when you encounter me, you get love, warmth, familiarity, and lots of fun. Okay. <laughs> where can negativity breed in that environment? It can't. <laughs> Now, is this where I insert a clip of him being messy? <laughs> like, I don't have enough time to insert all of the clips, but <laughs> maybe this is a place to do that. Oh, I did call her husband gay. I did. I met him. You look fruity. You know it takes one to know one, child. Now, that was, that was shade. That was definitely shade. I shouldn't have said that about that woman husband. But it takes a sissy to know a sissy, okay? I'm going to tell you this backstory now because there's a lot of people on here. And um, I should do this on Insta on on Facebook. No, I'm gonna do this on Facebook. I might as well monetize this. Fuck that. Meet me on Facebook. Okay? We if we're gonna do anything, we might as well monetize this. If you wanna hear the backstory, I'm finna go live on Facebook and tell you the backstory. I see you on Facebook. Let's make some money off this shit. Bye. Okay, so then. <laughs> This is hilarious, and I'm not even halfway through. <laughs> this is gonna be a long ass video. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so he goes on to say, it can't be. Michael is a fantastic dude, and although he is not in front of the camera a lot, he's just as goofy as I am, and we're a good match for one another. If people did throw harsh comments my way, it wouldn't matter to me. I've got a mission and a purpose, and it would take more than a few harsh comments to slow me down. <laughs> um so much here so much <laughs> like this lie about love and warmth and familiarity and lots of fun it, it, this that's the persona he gives but when you pay attention if you're actively those who pay attention and got their eyes open it's it's a lot of messiness that's what really drives that brand messiness and people who love mess that's what drives that brand um, there's no real love and warmth there. It's like watching a reality show <laughs> when it's all said and done. Like, it may appear that way. Y'all know I do Welcome to Sweetie Pies, uh, that whole thing with James Timothy. That seemed like a lot of warmth and, you know, love and fun and all of that. And then you got, you know, somebody taking the life of one of their relatives from that. So that's kind of foolishness going on behind the scenes uh, with this Darius Crooks brand. And then, okay, so the other piece is, at the time, and I wasn't going to say the guy's name, but he mentions it here. So uh, this guy, Michael, who he dated when he lived in New York, he's basically saying, because now he's dating a new guy. What's the guy's name? What's the name? Jerome. So he's dating Jerome now. And not only is there a familiarness, like they look somewhat alike because he has a type. Like there's another guy I know that he dated and they all, all three of them favor 
Uh, this guy is definitely way more attractive than Jerome. Jerome. Yeah. But anyway, what I see here is because I, I know Darius's patterns with dating. Like, you got to keep in mind, I knew him for uh, a decade. That means I saw a lot of exes. I, I knew uh, quite a few of them in the, in the randoms that were in between, too. So what I know is this whole thing, what we're reading, Michael is a fantastic dude. You know, he's goofy as I am. We're a good match for one another. All of that. That's his narrative. That's what he says about everyone. He's saying the same thing about Jerome right now. Then Darius, there's something that clicks within, within him. Really, it's usually like, the, you know, the honeymoon stage is over. Maybe the person challenges him in some way or, or he thinks the grass is greener on the other side. Whatever it is, something triggers in him. And then he starts to treat the person like dirt, like garbage. And then usually destroys that relationship in some way. And so, you know, rumors, cause I don't, I don't know the, the Michael dude. I just, you know, no hearsay, you know, word on the street is that he did the Michael dude real bad. And I, I, I expect the same with Jerome. I just do. Um, so, you know, we'll see time will tell I'll report on it. <laughs> it but the other piece I was going to say too, is, you know, back then he was heavily into, you know, flaunting, you know, the person that he was dating, uh, at the time. And, and what I noticed too, is that, well, I knew is that Darius, we all know he has, you know, mother issues. Any of us who've watched and those of you who, who know of this situation knows that part of his reason that he, uh, has such a hatred for black women and treats them the way that he does and doxes them and scams them and all of that stuff and bamboozles the ones who are following him, who don't know no better. Part of the reason that he does that is because of his issues with his mother. On the other side of it is because he did not have a relationship with his father, he tends to date older guys and they're like father figures. They all, you know, hey, he dated, I remember when we were on a cruise. Some of the stuff I'm going to say, I'll say one day. <laughs> That'll be like on Patreon or something. But anyway, <laughs> or the membership, the membership, something. But anyway, so he tends to date fatherly figure guys like they're always older much older uh you know and so the same thing with jerome jerome is uh much older than him this guy was older than him a couple others but anyway so this is just very interesting because what we're seeing play out now with jerome played out years ago with this michael guy in new york as well so again it'll be interesting you know to see um, how that, how that plays out. I ain't wishing no hate on it, you know, but I do know how, um, Darius Crooks operates. So the mind of a psychopath. Okay. So then she says, I heard that and haters are going to hate and potatoes are going to be patatas. And then LOL. <laughs> what? <laughs> My God, <laughs> she is so corny. <laughs> she then goes on to say, have you ever had any recipes that didn't turn out well? Hell yeah. <laughs> I've had a few of his recipes that didn't turn out well. Uh, he then says, patatas, LOL. Okay. Oh, and yes, I have. It happens all the time. Yes, I'm glad. One thing he's honest about here. <laughs> he says, ask any artist if they are proud of everything they create. I would agree with that. He says, of course they aren't. But those are the things that keep us moving and inspired to do better. Those are also the meals that you'll never see me post, LOL. Yes. And that's why he has a food stylist now because <laughs> it just now he can post everything <laughs> that she designs. <laughs> OK, and then she says, LOL, fair enough. Now I see that you have been traveling a lot as well from all the different restaurants you visit. Do they inspire you to try different ingredients that you might not have thought of or used in your cooking until now? Or do you stick to what you know and what's been working? And then Darius says, yes, I have traveled a little here and there. And sure, of course, eating around the world inspires me. Everything I do inspires me. I take in all of my life's experiences, internalize them, and show them through creativity. So when I went to Orlando to meet the Filipino family that started the amazing seafood restaurant, I was inspired. When I went to Philadelphia and met the guy that started a one-window cheesesteak joint, I was inspired. When I went to Las Vegas and had dinner at Hash House with friends from Chicago, I was just so inspired. Inspiration happens every time I take some sort of experience. And then I turn that experience around through my food. Okay, so there's truth here, but then you also have to, 
you know, look through all of the <laughs> finagling of the words that he does. And so he's admitting that he gets his ideas from his other experiences and things he sees. These are not just things that are coming from the heavens down into his mind. He basically gathers, and he's saying it here, he gathers things that have inspired him from all over the place, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when you basically copy someone's intellectual property completely and then rebrand it as your own and don't give them credit. That's what we're really talking about. All people are inspired. I'm inspired. When I watch other things, whether it's TV or YouTube or whatever, my mind works the same way as it pertains to this genre. And, and when I was in construction, it did the same. <laughs> and so there's nothing wrong with having inspiration, but for me to get on here and literally verbatim do someone else's content, like video content and take their script and all of that and then regurgitate it and give it to y'all and then not give them any credit and they've done the research and the, the video concept and the ideas and the script and all of that. That's where the predatory practices come in. And imagine me, every video I do, I've literally stolen exactly what someone else has done and said on YouTube. And so that's what people are talking about when they talk about him stealing recipes, not going to different places all over the you know, country and, and coming up with ideas based on experiences. That's normal. So just want to get that little disclaimer here because, you know, there's people who are like, do you can't steal a recipe? That's not intellectual property. True. But from a moral standpoint, nor should you be copying someone as idea verbatim and especially someone of lesser popularity than you and then being a predator and stealing. So basically the things that could potentially take off and skyrocket their career or their notoriety, you've taken, you've stolen, and now people think it's yours. So it doesn't seem like their original idea, therefore stealing their ability to grow. That's a problem. You're a predator when you do that. Okay. So she then goes on to say, what is your all time favorite recipe out of your creations? Do you have a favorite type of food? Mine definitely has to be soul food, Italian and Mexican. Darius then says, my favorite is anything that I can eat with a fork or a spoon, LOL. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> he says, I love all my recipes because they represent a part of me. However, or, or someone else. <laughs> Uh, he says, however, the ultimate fried chicken and peach cobbler shortcake recipe might make you slap somebody's mama, though. Just saying. Mm, no about it. She then says, I wouldn't put it past you. Your recipes are such a blessing to my stomach. And if I could G walk through my MacBook into your kitchen, man, look, I'd be like, hey, roomies, what's for dinner? LOL. So what does your future hold? And I found this interesting, like. I have a feeling because she's saying your recipes are such a blessing. I have a feeling based on this comment that she's never made one of his recipes. She's basically salivating, as she's told us multiple times unnecessarily, salivating at what she's saying, pictures, uh, photos, which you can't taste photos. And so something can look and appear good. When we watch a commercial for a restaurant and they have, you know, burgers and, and pasta and all of that on TV, that stuff has been styled. I wouldn't, I dare you to eat it. <laughs> I dare you to eat it. <laughs> so, it, you know, she's hyping all this stuff up and saying how great his food is, but basically she's talking about how it looks. So it doesn't look like she's actually made any of it to test the recipes to see if they actually translate into real life, or is it just for clicks and views, which there are actually comments and accounts of people who have purchased the cookbooks and tried to make the recipes and say that they are incomplete. There are no measurements the, or they came out horrible, etc. And there's a lot like really bad reviews um, for that. So again, this is the D wife though. So you know how they do. So anyway, she goes on to ask, so what does the future hold for DariusCooks.com? Do you ever want to open your own school for people who want to learn to cook or even teach a class to those who are cooking challenge, LOL. Darius then goes on to say, not G walk through your MacBook, LOL. You are so silly and corny. <laughs> I said that part. <laughs> he then goes on to say, I don't think I'll do a school in all honesty. I'm doing live online cooking classes that started on Saturday, August the 2nd at 11 a.m. on my YouTube channel. They'll be live unedited and full of mess because I won't be able to take out the bloopers, LOL. 
I've got a few other projects in the work and I'm working on a restaurant concept in Chicago that I'll open up in 32 months or more. It's all a part of my three year, 36 month plan. So interesting. So here, and I think I had heard about maybe him wanting to open another restaurant in Chicago. I think I was hearing rumors of that and then it ended up being Greens and Gravy in Atlanta was his first restaurant that he actually opened. Um, what I also find is interesting is um, his cooking class on YouTube. So this is basically, now we see the inception of him going live, doing the live cooking that he still does to this day. And he talks about, you know, the bloopers, um, him not being able to edit. And I'm very familiar with that because, <laughs> yeah, I'm very familiar with that because going live, that's a whole nother level of, of doing all of this, especially when you're, you know, when you care about quality and stuff. And I'm a perfectionist. So that's a whole nother thing. So this is him. So he's talking about, you know, the inability to take out bloopers. And I remember because, again, I was around uh, and the videographer for his first, I don't know, 10, 20 uh, videos that he did ever. And yes, there were bloopers. So I definitely know it took him time to get to the level that he's at now. I mean, it's sloppy, like, especially when somebody gets on live and they're drunk or get drunk during the time or fake drunk, whatever he's doing. But, but again, so this again is helping us with the timeline of being able to see him starting, uh, this evolution into what we see today with the, the lives. And I'm not sure if this was during the Periscope. I'm sure. Well, maybe this was during the Periscope days too, because this was around maybe 2014 ish. So, so yeah, that's interesting. And I think this is also him gearing up because he eventually gets into his cooking with Darius cooks or something. So he did like cooking classes she probably gave him that idea now based on because <laughs> he'll say like he's not into doing things and then someone had been and gave him an idea like she just did because he did eventually start having cooking with Darius Cooks or whatever he was calling. And then he also had the dining with Darius Cooks. So he was kind of doing both. And then he dropped the, the cooking uh, classes at one point. And then he had the master class where he was supposedly teaching people about, you know, being an online influencer or whatever. There were issues with that and building, building an online business, I think it was. And so there were issues with that because there were people who got scammed with that, like the links didn't work, et cetera. So they couldn't get into it. And he never, he basically blocked them and ignored them and never gave them their money. It's, you know, his pattern, like we know that by now. Okay. So she says, smart plan. I can't wait to see what's next for you with this food journey. I expect nothing less, but great things. Well, Darius, that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank God. Cause I was wondering how long this is going to be. <laughs> She says, once again, thank you so much for taking time to chat with me and I wish you the absolute best and I can't wait to try more of these recipes of yours. Okay, so she claims she's trying these recipes. Uh, he says, thank you. This has been a blast. She says, before I let you go, let everyone know where they can find you on social media and where they can find out step-by-step -step recipes and guides so they too can try some of your dishes with their own families. And then he gives all of his, you know, social media, uh, stuff that I ain't promoting. <laughs> I'm not promoting that crap. Um, so that was that article. And so again, I had no idea. This is kind of a blind read, blind reaction. I had no idea what this is going to take us, but I find it interesting that it gave us a timeline. It gave us some of the beginnings of the creation of the alleged predatory business that we now see, you know, known as hashtag Darius Crooks. <laughs> so there's definitely more to come in this realm. Um, kind of doing more of a retrospect. I'm kind of doing that with a lot of things. Now that I'm thinking about it. a lot of the series where I'm kind of going back to the beginning and then working our way back through so that it can tie some of the pieces together. And so there's definitely some stuff in the works. I know it's been a while since I did a Darius Crooks video. Just know when they take time, it's usually me doing some research in the background or organizing some stuff because it's all, it's just a lot of a lot of footage, a lot of clips, a lot of images. It's just a lot. It's always something happening. <laughs> and and sometimes just, you know, being in the mood to even talk about the food. So so with that, if you've made it to this point in the video, please like the video below to help us grow. And if you are returning or you are new to this channel and you have not subscribed as of yet, 
this would be a great time to hit that subscribe button below to join one of the most evolved subscriber families in these YouTube streets. And what else? Oh, and also don't forget, we have a VIP text community. It's a way for you to keep in touch with me, know when I upload new videos, kind of know what's happening behind the scenes. I give heads up of things over there, things to come, etc. So, but other than that, definitely stay tuned. There'll be more to come with the Exposed Darius Crooks series, as well as the Welcome to Sweetie Pie's Investigator series and our infamous series. So with that, until next time, until I upload the next video, make sure to take care and be blessed. Peace. For the people that ain't close to Speak a little something you could toast to I ain't tryna hear about what you won't do Moving like I mean to Hit the ground running like the rain do Speak a little something that you into I ain't tryna hear about what you been through Like hold up, hold up, say what's the hold up I got that pack, who got the roll up I'm tryna pull up, it seem like every time I show up It gotta go up, see the drip, they see the glow up Oh now they know us it's funny how my pockets out of shape, but I fit for the flex. Clear the phone call, hit my chick with a text. Parlay through the bird with my drip from the jacks. Save a couple hundred by your with the rest. I